Hi there guys and welcome back to the Ever and Andy Fishing Channel. Look who it is! We've got Hi. IB back out. IB, we've had some super exciting news recently, haven't we? We hit a thousand subscribers! <laughs> Thank you so much guys. We had a little we had a little celebratory bottle of fizz, didn't we? We did, we, we did, did indeed. It's so cool and it's so flattering that there's a thousand people out there who are actively wanting to watch us fish. I know, guys, it's so, so cool. Thank you so much. I didn't know that anyone's going to want to watch us because, you know, it's because us. Because it's us. <laughs> <laughs> but that, the fact that so many of you actually want to watch us and comment on our videos and like our videos and share it on social media, it's so cool. It's so amazing. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Off the back of that, we need to make some more videos, don't we? We do. We've got a thousand people to make videos for. How cool is that? It's amazing. So we've come out today. It is freezing cold. It's the, nearly the third week of January. We've got a load of snow on the hills around us it's very very cold so we thought what a great time to come out and do a video showing you guys how to get the most out of your winter river fishing and we're not necessarily talking about tips or tactics in terms of the fish here are we it's no, the other not. things it's the things you don't have to think about in the summer you're keeping yourself warm keeping yourself safe you know stuff like that that we think is really important and, and massively important for a day's fishing if you want to enjoy it and with that i would like to introduce the first tip tip number one presented by andy be careful, the footage that you're going to see next might be shocking. You'll love it. Right, so the first layer you're going to need in your layering system when you're thinking about your winter fishing is your base layer, and this one's so important. Uh, so I've got skin-tight bottoms on here, I've got a fairly skin-tight top that's got quite a high neck on it to keep the wind out, and in amongst that I'm also counting good quality um, merino wool socks, they're super warm decent quality knitted hat to keep the heat in, really essential for your head. And my polar, I'm my polar buff, I'm so cold. My polar buff's really important for me because I hate the wind getting around my neck. Uh, remember when you're doing your base layers, try and stick to synthetics where possible. Failing that stuff like merino is great, but for goodness sake, don't use cotton because it soaks wet up. It'll actually make you colder. Oh crikey IB, can we do the next layer please? Okay, so second layer now, and this is my absolute favourite piece of fishing clothing wear that I own. Uh, a full, uh, all-in-one fleecy pair of pants like this is absolutely essential. They're great at keeping heat in. Again, all synthetic, so it's not soaking up your sweat. Absolutely vital. Uh, and the, the one piece is much better than the two piece at keeping the heat in, because there's a nice long zip there just in case you need to relieve yourself at any point. And on top of there goes a nice quality thick synthetic hoodie. I can already feel myself warming up. I like to wear the hoodie, first off because it's warm in itself, secondly the hood gives me something else to put on the head, it's the second layer on the head, thirdly because it's going to keep the wind off the back of my neck, you can see there it'll keep the wind away so a hood is a great thing to wear in the winter, it's got a multitude of uses and they look a bit cooler. Thirdly and lastly the outer layer, now the outer layer has got a number of different things that it needs to fulfil, uh, first off you need something that's windproof, it needs to be breathable and obviously particularly in the case of your waders they need to be waterproof so that's what we've got here really good quality set of waders waterproof windproof breathable uh, durable exactly what you're looking for and then the top off of me is covered with a good quality wading jacket again waterproof windproof breathable big hood on the back nice hand warmer pockets the kind of stuff you'd want in the winter i've also got a good quality pair of wading boots with really really big tungsten studs in you know sometimes when you're winter fishing you're doing a bit more wading slightly riskier wade in deeper water Making sure you've got enough grip is vital. So really, really important, good quality wading boot. The other thing that I've got in my hands, you might have noticed is really, really high quality gloves. These things really are the best gloves I've found on the market in terms of warm. I'll be honest, I hate fishing wearing gloves. I do it very, very little. I try to avoid it where possible. I've tried different types, fingerless, mittens, stuff like that. I just can't find anything that works for me. When I'm guiding, if it's cold, these come with me and they're an absolute game changer. You've got to keep your fingers warm to be able to change flies pair of gloves will do that brilliantly. The other thing that you might have noticed about is actually on my head. Now you might think winter sunglasses ridiculous. It amazes me how many people go out and take the risk of winging around 5 mil tungsten beads with no eye protection. It drives me absolutely bonkers. So you notice these, you might be able to see them, I have a yellow lens, it's a light enhancer. So important, even during the winter when you're not casting as far or sometimes not casting at all you've still got to cover your eyes up because crikey, if you cop one of those tungsten beads in the eye, it's going to hurt. So in terms of winter clothing, we're nearly there actually. I'm fully kitted out and ready to go, but one thing I try to have with me as much as possible 
is a dry bag with a spare change of clothes in. So I've got another warm shirt in here, I've got a couple of pairs of socks, I've got another base layer in there. You know, it's stuff that, you know, worst comes to the worst, I do take a tumble in the river rather than having to get straight in the car and go home. I can just go back to the car, get changed, get back fishing, really important. And the final two bits that I think should probably come under this section, but maybe, maybe not, are particularly for those guys who are fishing the bigger rivers, I'm thinking the D or the Tay, places like that. A buoyancy aid, for goodness sake, if you're going in those big rivers or if you're going in a flooded river, not a bad idea to put something like this on. A little bit cumbersome, but geez, if it saves you on a fall, it'll be well worth it. Down the same kind of route, wading staff. Again, if you don't know the river or if the river's coloured or if it's a particularly big, powerful river, just having a wading staff to help you feel your way across can be an absolute game changer. It can be the difference between having a good day's fishing and having a terrifying day's fishing. So there you go, first on our list for how to get the most out of your winter river fly fishing is definitely good quality clothing and equipment. So I'm going to pass over now to Ivy who's got our second point and I think it's another really good one. So the second part of making sure that your winter uh, fishing is going great and you are able to pull, th pull throughout the day is to having a warm drink with you. Make sure you have uh, either a flask or a Kelly kettle with you. If it's a flask, double, triple check that it's a good flask. There's nothing worse than getting out of a freezing cold water to finding that your tea or coffee is freezing cold. And even better, if you can have a Kelly kettle or any kind of kettle rather than a flask, not only it's going to get out of get you out of the cold water you know and it's going to provide you an extra heat while you're boiling the water it will also guarantee a warm and hot drink that you can make on the spot with kelly kettle what you want to make sure you have is some some kindling some fire lighters and a waterproof uh, lighter there's nothing worse than you know scrapping around trying to find steaks that are already wet so scrub that idea don't try and be bear grills and just do it the easy way even if it does mean carrying a few extra bits at least you know you're guaranteed to always have a hot drink and the water has boiled now it literally took less than just a couple of minutes and i can have a really hot drink and go back out there and start fishing again Cheers. Thanks, Abby. Cheers. Now that I have my hot drink, and it has a hot drink, we can go to another thing that's going to keep you a little bit more keen to go, which is food. Wading in a really cold water, wading is tough as it is on its own. Wading in the cold, freezing water, it's going to take a lot out of you. It's an absolute calorie killer. So what you want to make sure is that you take uh, some foods, perhaps with a bit more sugar in it, something that will release the energy a bit slower. If you do have an option of making the warm food on the bank, if you have a little stove, that's great. You can make some bacon sandwich or some sausage sandwiches. Whatever will make you keep on going just a little bit longer. Andy, over to you now. What's the next step? Well, nice to catch a fish, but I'll tell you what, that water is really cold, even though it's only up to my knees, I can feel it in my feet particularly quite cold. So tip number three that we're going to come on to is take regular breaks, you know, you don't want to be in the water for two, three, four hours on days like this, it's far too cold for that. Set yourself a timer from 45 minutes every hour, just get out, have a bit of a walk around, get the blood going. If you've got one, have a flask of tea, get the Kelly kettle going, have a little bit of food. In fact, you know what? That's exactly my plan now. I'm gonna get that Kelly kettle back on because it is cold.
another thing what uh, makes us great when you come with a buddy is while he is making you a lovely cup of tea or a coffee you can sneak into his pot and beat him up even when it's cold and when it's miserable it's definitely worth coming out and fishing it definitely worked out for me a gorgeous beautiful winter grayling And that's why we get out of bed at 8 o'clock in the morning on the cold winter mornings, even when it's snowing. Ah, well that was cool, so I'm back here getting myself charged up with a nice warm cup of tea. Ibis jumped into my spot and caught an absolute cracker there straight away. Uh, if you are going to come with a mate, it needs to be someone you're not going to get jealous of. And I'm super happy that Ibis caught that fish. She's had a pretty difficult couple of months with everything that's gone on. And this is actually the first time she's held a fly rod since about October. So to turn up and bang out a fish like that within five minutes. She's getting too good at this. I'm gonna drink my tea. Flies out now. This is why it's worth it to come out on a cold winter's day. So tip number four is a pretty straightforward one as you can probably tell it's gone a little bit darker and I think we've about had enough there haven't we? I think so. It went okay, I've caught a couple, Ivy's caught a couple more and the biggest ones again. I'm going to stop bringing her. But there's no point in killing ourselves all day you know, we've done what, four hours fishing there? If that, yeah. Three and a half, four hours fishing, we've caught a few fish, I think that'll do. You know these cold winter days they're not 12 hour session days at all that's not the idea of this come three four five hours fishing as soon as you start feeling like you're getting cold or you just get out just get out and go home don't force yourself to the point where you're not enjoying it and just suffering the way your way through so i totally agree so i think on that note we'll have a walk back to the hut and we'll catch up with you guys for one last tip and that's tip number five tip number five hopefully with another cup of coffee and tea see you at the hut Geez, I enjoyed that though. It has got really cold, hasn't it? And I think actually uh, that leads very nicely into our fifth and final piece of advice on getting the most out of your winter river fly fishing, which is IB. And the tip number four, tip number five is make sure you fish with your friends. Don't go out there on your own when it's really cold, when the rivers are higher. Not only it's going to be way more fun and you have someone to take your pictures, <laughs> it's going to be a lot safer if you have someone out there where if, if you do get in trouble if the current is too strong or you know if you are really tired and you're really struggling now with the cold you have someone to rely on so yeah just make sure you go out there with someone and i think the tip number six that is an unofficial tip by ib just make sure you go out there just because it's winter it doesn't mean that you should stop fishing pack your gear away and then wait till the summer or the spring there is so many fish to be caught this winter, so make sure you go out there and you catch all of them. Great words from IB. I completely agree with everything you've just said there. Get out fishing, enjoy it. There's so many fish, there's so many opportunities. Make the effort, make the effort with a mate. We have an absolute blast, don't we? We fish with friends all the time. Particularly in the winter, you can fish closer together with modern techniques and stuff. It's a load of fun, uh, it keeps you safe, the banter keeps going. Uh, fish with a friend, always. Fish with a friend. On that note, guys, thank you very much for watching the video. I'd like to think that we've shared this video with some friends. I would like to thank that as well. You thank guys. you guys so much for... We have over a thousand subscribers. We hit our goal that we said we want to hit by 2019. It's really, really cool. We are waiting for your comments. We're so keen to keep talking to you guys. So please keep commenting, keep watching, keep liking the videos because that helps us out a lot. And just thank you for hanging out with us. Guys, take care. We'll catch up with you again for another video soon. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.